Hello and welcome to Clickbait and look at this little cutie pie camera. This little IGB, well not IGY. What a beautiful world this will be. It's tiny and about 70 years old and it still sort of, sort of works. This is called a HIT or a HIT type camera. Sometimes they were known as spy cameras because they're tiny. They were basic, low-cost, almost novelty cameras made in Japan in the post-war years. The genre gets its name from an original model called the Hit Camera that was made by the Togodo company in Toyohashi. And in Japan, they're sometimes called Mame Camera, that's camera with a K, or Bean Cameras in translated land. Now, there were lots of them, and all the various models do look very similar indeed, with uh, just different names stamped above the lens but they all have this very similar shape, form, factor and rough dimensions of about five and a half by four and a half by three and a half centimetres. So they're very tiny. They came from a want for cameras that were cheap to buy and used little material to make. So they're stamped from low grade pot metal and have a, like a leather grip binding and they even come with a natty little leather case as cameras of the day generally did back then. Now, open the back with a little pull up peg on the side and it's like a miniature version of a roll film camera with a pair of minute spindles. So literally, honey, I shrunk the Fuji spools. And that's because it takes 17.5 millimeter roll film, like a tiny, tiny 120 format camera with paper backing so you can see the frame numbers through this little red hole in the back. It makes 14 by 14 millimeter negatives, a bit like a disc camera or 110 format from the 70s and 80s, but much fiddlier and therefore cooler. A 17.5 millimeters might sound like an odd choice for a format size, but it actually dates back to the late 1800s, first recorded in the Burt camera of 1898 and credited with some of the first moving picture film. It became popular during World War II when 35 millimeter film could be split down the middle along its length to go twice as far. So 35 divided by two, 17.5. After the war, Kodak's new 16 and 8mm formats replaced it fairly quickly as a standard, although it stayed popular in developing countries, and apparently Japan, where submenture photography was very popular. The IGB has a fixed focus lens of indeterminate quality, and a fixed shutter speed which fires on the downstroke of the shutter release, here on the side of the lens. It has a little viewfinder above the lens, which being so close to it, I imagine gives very little parallax error. The only other control is a film winder on the top, there's no rewind though, as with roll film you wind from one spindle to the other, keeping a new film spindle in the camera and the last one going off with the film to be processed. Now, this all looks like it works. There's really not much to go wrong, but 17.5 mm film isn't easy to come by. I guess 16 mm might work, but it might curl around the edges, or bigger film could be cut down if you're feeling brave with the scissors in the darkroom. I'm not. But having done all of that to get film into the camera, developing it would be interesting to say the least in a Patterson tank and a spiral thing. Yeah, that's gonna be fun, I don't think. And I'm not sure the results of all the effort would really be worth it, considering the quality of the lens and the size of the negative. So these days, these cameras are just collectible curiosities. And there are lots of variety to collect with values from around 20 to 150 or so. The one to look for apparently is the Snappy with more controls on it. And it was made by the company which would eventually become Konica. So the IGB hit camera, it's fun. It shows an interesting chapter in photographic history. It's useless, but it looks fun on the shelf. And that's got to count for something. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like, please do as always hit like and subscribe and join us again next time for more camera stuff. Take care, everybody.